Hi guys, welcome to Office Blokes React. I'm Office Bloke Dave. I'm Office Bloke Mike. I'm Office Bloke Daz. Collectively, we are the Office Blokes. Yeah. We are three mm -hmm. British things that people do have a word for. Can't say words. it yet. <laughs> no, no, it's a bit too early in the video for that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we are the office folks. We're trying to get to 200,000 subs um, and we would appreciate it. Anyone who's not subbed, just pop down there, click yeah. the button. It means the world to us. Cost you absolutely nothing. Simple as that. Do it. Bada bing. Or Easy. Big, Mike, or big yeah. Mike's coming over. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Uh, eight things Britain doesn't have a word. Eight American things Britain doesn't have a word for. I'm not on form mm. today whatsoever. No. It's fine, Dave. I'm yeah, doing bad like, reading. I like this channel, I do. Lawrence it's good, isn't it? Yeah, Lost in the Pond. He's really good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah. He does lean into the accent for someone from Grimsby, yeah. though. <laughs> yeah. He's very English. Um, eight American things Britain doesn't even have a word for. Mm. Right. I'll just I'm assuming maybe the slang words, maybe. I don't know. Well, it's going to be American things, isn't it? So, yeah. There are certain things we come across where, when I, when I lived in the USA, there was things that you'd, you'd get that you don't really get over here. Right. So it's not like we don't have a word for it. Right, we, just okay. we just don't, don't have really it. see it, yeah. yeah. So it could okay. be that, but I don't know. That, um, you know, that green dip that we got from Texas in the unboxing video? Yeah. Yep. I've gone through about half of that already. Yeah. Half a jar of it. It's well nice. <laughs> Mine's in my fridge in the office upstairs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I keep just doing a steak so. on top of a salad or whatever and then just putting that all yeah. over it, jalapenos and everything. I must admit, I've had half the bottle of the Whataburger spicy ketchup. I've not opened it yet. I oh, haven't. No, I haven't. I'm not waiting yeah. for my burger. So, mm. yeah. It's yeah. ready in my cupboard, ready to go. Yeah. Is it nice? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Good. It's quite spicy. It's got a nice kick to it. Does it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Mm. Nice. Uh, well, we'll get into it then. Eight American things Britain doesn't even have a word for. Let's do it. So it's very important for British people living in America, like me, to know the difference between the shoe brand and something else that Americans call a hush puppy before I put my foot in it. Literally in the case of the shoe. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence Brown and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to words. And you and I both know this by now, it's often said that Britain and America are two nations divided by a common language. And what does this mean? It means that English is a prominent language in both countries, but that we have different words and spellings and pronunciations for the same things. But what if I told you right here and now that both Britain and America have things for which the other country doesn't even have words? Well today I'll be looking at a selection of those from the United States of America, a country I've lived in for the past 13 years. Now as with all things Britain and America, a lot of these words come back to food, whereas some of them pertain to social customs, the law, and America's obscenely large landscape. And so without further ado, here are eight American things that Britain doesn't even have a word for. Before we get into it, I saw a TikTok the other day of an American girl kicking off that we need to get our own language. We do. Yeah, as in, um, but she was saying British people. She's saying English is the American language and you people need to come up with your own language. Really? And we're deadly serious. I didn't realise that... There are people out there. Wow. And they're mostly on TikTok. I told you, I told you when, when I first got to America, someone asked me how long I'd been there for. We were there only a couple of weeks, a couple of days even. And we told them and she went... I can't believe it. I can't believe how good your English is and you've only been here for a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Here's a story. Several years ago, my wife took me to the Indiana State Fair. And when I say she took me there, I got absolutely no say in the matter. And even as we stood in line for the world's most famous pig race, I couldn't help but look around me and notice the types of fair food that were on offer. Of course, you had cotton candy, and of course the British do have a word for that. It's candy floss. You had hot dogs, otherwise known in Britain as hot dogs. And then you had <laughs> elephant ear. And some British people, perhaps even some American people, might be thinking, ooh, you ate a part of an elephant. No, thank goodness it's not a real elephant ear. No, this is just a type of fried dough that happens to be shaped like an elephant ear or a frisbee gone wrong. And the reason that I say that some Americans might not recognise this name is that it goes by different pseudonyms. You see, while Britain might not have a word for this, America has plenty. As well as elephant ear and fried dough, it also goes by fry bread. Fry bread, not to be confused with the fried bread that you might find on an English breakfast. Completely different beast. Doughboys, scones, again, not to be confused with an English scone slash gone, pizza frit, or my personal favourite, frying sauces. And while we're on the subject <laughs> of American derived food, that brings us on to this. Is it just like a, a big flat yeah, donut? I know, I know it's yeah. dough boys. Dough boys. Right. Okay. 
Yeah. Are they pretty widely eaten around no, the no, States? No, not really. I, I don't know. I never... I'd swerve them. I'd be not pretty wide me. if I ate them. Mm. Not for me. Yeah. Fair enough. We've got grits upstairs. Ah, oh, yes, grits. Now, on the face of it, grits sound absolutely awful. Because when I think of the word grit, I think of two things. I think of grit to mean courage and resolve and strength of character, <clears throat> but usually sweat. Or grit as in small bits of stone or sand. Either way, I don't want to eat that. But it turns out that grits, a Southern American dish, is a type of porridge. And I know what you're thinking, Britain. That's ridiculous, Lawrence. We do have a word for porridge, and it's porridge. This is a specific type of porridge and a big deal in the Southern United States. But in the unlikely event that you're thinking of moving to the United States just because you want to live where grits is, but you don't want to move to the Southern United States because you can't stomach 400 degree temperatures, in my experience, you can get grits here in the Midwest, and I assume other places in the United States. Second thoughts, it'd be easier just to say in Britain and look up the recipe online. That's something you can't do so easily with this. Yes, B-U-T-T-E. Now, before I go any further, it's probably important in the interest of not being demonetized that I point out that this word is pronounced butte. And it's probably quite an appropriate pronunciation because buttes are often beautiful, or at the very least, stunning. Now, some people might be thinking, get to the point, what on earth is a butte? Well, a butte is a very specific type of hill. And this specific type of hill is not commonly found in Britain. It's a type of hill that has a flat top and vertical or nearly vertical sides. Think of the Mitten Butte in Monument Valley in Arizona, or Devil's Tower in Wyoming, wow. or to give mm. it its official name, Richard Dreyfuss's Mashed Potato. And now that we're three words into the list, do you want me to go on to number four? In other words, do you want some more? Do you want some more? Do you want some more? Well, bring it on. You see what I did there? When I first moved... S'mores and marshmallows, aren't they? Yeah. Is it just the same? Um, I don't know. I don't eat them. <laughs> Fair enough. That's that's S'mores. S'mores. Yeah. yeah. I, don't know. I always thought that's what they call marshmallows. Well, I think you, no. from, you don't have enough. You can have some more. But... <laughs> 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 they must be slightly different, otherwise we do have a word for them, and it's marshmallows. But I think they have marshmallows in the USA. All right, so s'mores yeah. are probably different. Ah, fair mm. enough. The United States. I was offered a s'more, and I turned it down because I was frightened of what it might be. <laughs> and then somebody described the contents, and my love for them from that moment on only grew, just like my waistline. It's like you, that Mike. What's you up? won't try something for the fear of what it might be. No. Oh, I don't know. I know. I'm hundred percent right. <laughs> Do you agree, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Americans know what a s'more is, but this is for my British viewers, i.e. my mum. An official s'more is a roasted marshmallow, right, stuck to a slab of chocolate. <laughs> Sorry for the noises. And together, they are sandwiched between a graham cracker, right? And if you're wondering what a graham cracker is, it's similar to what the British would call a digestive biscuit, except it's square and Americans pronounce it gram. And because of the fried marshmallow element to all of this, it's perfect to make one while you're camping. And you might be wondering, why is it called small with an apostrophe? Because it's a contraction of some more, meaning that my sandwich yeah, there you go. made sense for once. Unlike this one, bring... Before he moves on, because he's glancing over that quite quick. That sounds amazing. Yeah. That sounds really nice. Does it not sound a bit like a wagon wheel? It's very similar to a wagon wheel. Yeah. Not much different. No. Yeah. Well, it's the same ingredients pretty much, isn't it? Yeah. Is it digestive biscuits and a wagon wheel? Yeah, yeah coated in it, chocolate. It's, it's not like far a, off, is it? It's like a graham cracker. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't really eat wagon wheels. They don't do it No, I don't. I, yeah. I've never I it, 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 I've eaten them over the years. I don't yeah. like marshmallow, so it's... But I think if it's freshly toasted and it's hot and gooey and stuff, yeah. then mm. it'd be different. Wagon wheel's a bit shit, yeah. isn't it? It's a bit like it, though. I think you're it's right. It's a bit I like you, it. You killed it. <laughs> I went from being excited about it, and I'm going to buy the ingredients to, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pass now. Dogs. The word car hop has nothing to do with dogs because that would be mental. Furthermore, a car hop is not a type of car that hops because see previous comment. A car hop is somebody who serves you food, but while you're in your car. Yeah. Now, of course, it's... We've got that now. Well, you get it at McDonald's when your food's not ready. They no, say park up and we'll bring yeah, it out. It's, it's not quite the same. same what they do is they have a, my mate used to have a Stuart's Root Beer. Uh, it's called a Stuart's Root Beer stand and they used to come out on roller skates. I've seen thing, loads of fails. They clip the tray, they clip the tray <laughs> onto your window and you sit in your car and eat just off the tray. You know, oh, yeah, right. Like, pass oh, it right. around and you eat in the car. 
sort of thing. Yeah. Whether that's what he's referring to, I don't know, but my mate had a yeah. root beer stand, so that's that's what they did there. Yeah. Mm. If you look at the McDonald's down there, the car park is literally just full of people eating in their cars. Mm. Oh, it is now, alone. isn't it? It's just, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just got worse and worse. It's all the, the, you get the Uber Eats and all sorts, you know, waiting for deliveries, don't you? So yeah. it's absolutely chocker all the time now, all the time. Yeah. I, I'm that, if I do have a McDonald's, I, I call up Uber Eats to bring it rather than just, I could walk there. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Like a minute. I know, you yeah. always get like half a dozen or so people waiting for, de- you know, to take out deliveries there, yeah, don't yeah. you? Yeah. All yeah. the time. It's yeah. constant, so. It's just a, getting in there and getting out is a problem. Yep. Well known that it's a big part of American culture to order food at the drive-thru, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about drive-ins. Drive-in. Drive-ins mm. are a still-lasting remnant of a bygone era here in the United States where you park your car at the designated drive-in, the car hop comes to you and takes your order and then brings you your food. And you stay there in this exact same spot right next to the restaurant or cafe or whatever you want to call it. And I personally have come to consider this fine dining even in a Prius. Allow me to do a quick shout out to two that I've been to. Recently on my Route 66 journey I visited the Polka Dot Inn in Braidwood, Illinois and car hops serve me every now and again at Jean's Root Beer stand in Anderson, Indiana. And I am see Jean's Root Beer is the same as what I was saying, Stewart's yeah. Root Beer. It's the yeah. same. Uh, yeah, it's right, not right. the same, but you know, same sort of same concept. sort of thing. Yeah, just a different brand. I think it makes a lot more sense in a car where people in a car, sorry, in a country where people drive big cars. Mm. You know, you've got this big pickup truck, it's comfortable, mm. you can sit in it and eat your food. And yeah. Over here, it's, they don't really. They have actually got one over here. It's one at the Trafford Centre, I it think. Because I think my eldest, my eldest son's been there a couple of times, I think. Yeah, and they started doing like. Oh. We're getting a lot of like uh, different sort of like things with the driving, especially since lockdown. Hmm. So yeah. you, you had like the driving movie theatres, which yeah. is a big, obviously a big thing in the Yeah, USA I looked at tickets for mm. one of them, though. It was well expensive mm. for a driving movie. Sorry, right, so you've got a convertible that <clears> as well. You know, it's uh, mm. not really worked. And I'm, not in Manchester, it doesn't. <laughs> your, ladders are, your ladders are getting away the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Not for long. Yeah, see through the ladder. Not for long. <laughs> you get the ladder out and climb up. And well, <laughs> in some of the more snazzy quarters of the United States, there are even car hops on roller skates, but they're difficult to find because it's not the eighties anymore. The roller skate ones. I've seen loads of fails. Yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. amazing. Oh, People just the whole tray of drinks tray everything through someone's car window yeah. and they've bailed. Ooh. Yeah, such a terrible idea. Oh, when you think yeah. about it. Just walk jaywalking. You may remember that I talked about this very topic a few months ago. I had absolutely no idea what jaywalking was. You know, it was a word that cropped up occasionally in films, but I just assumed it was a sport. I thought this was going to be a big deal, right? You know the joke, why did the chicken cross the road? Well, he didn't because he was too much of a chicken. At least that was the case at first, and after my wife had laughed at me 17 times, I started to get the impression that I might be overthinking this. All of the years that I've lived here, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, ooh, did you see Ashley, I think she was jaywalking. Better call the cops. The reason we don't have a word for jaywalking in the UK is because that law doesn't exist. And funnily enough, despite our difficult relationship with rain and drizzle, we also don't have a word for this. Hmm. Admittedly. You know what it is? Yeah. It's like we'll do it another time. We'll get back to you. Sort of thing, is it? Yeah, but you can say, I used to have a car wash next to, you know, I'm obsessed with having my car washed. Yep. Yep. Right? I used to live, work next door to a car wash, so I'd put my car in for a wash. And then if it rained that day or within 24 hours, I could take it back for a free wash. Really? Yeah. No. Ah. Or if, you know, if there was snow or anything like that and the rain check. And you, that's what it was. You'd go back and get the, you know, your refund or. So is it casually okay. used as like. Let's take a, you know, we were going to go for dinner, but let's take so a rain, rain check. check yeah. And that yeah. means we'll do it. Yeah, another time. You another think, yeah. time. Yeah, it's repeat. That, like yeah. A, a repeat thing. But yeah. yeah. So they used to do what, what was called a rain check and you used to take your car. And I, that's why I used to get it washed. And that's like where it's, days. Ah, that's, so that's, that's where it's come from yeah, then, I suppose. Every, every, every second wash was free wow. almost. Right. Rain or, I don't know. <clears throat> Perhaps owing to the digital age in which RSVPing or not RSVPing is done at the click of a button, the word rain check is sadly one I haven't encountered very often since moving here. But I do remember it featuring a lot in American films in the 80s, so that's good enough for me. Basically, when somebody takes a rain check, it's to indicate mm. that that person cannot accept the invitation right now, you said. right? But mm. they'd be happy mm. to turn up in the future. And you might be thinking, why is it called a rain check? Does the coming together of people depend on whether or not it's raining? 
sort of. You see, it originated in baseball. A coupon might have been handed to a baseball ticket holder when the game was cancelled due to rain, and that would mean that that coupon holder could then attend the rearranged game without being charged. And while Britain also has a sport with a batsman and a lot of players who just stand around for no reason, the term rain check never caught on. Of course, that could also be something to do with the fact that we often turn down invitations in favour of that non-specific thing that we've got going on this weekend. Either way, Britain doesn't use the word rain check just like it doesn't use our final entry, unless you're talking about shoes. Imagine if, you, had, you know, uh, should we go for dinner and someone goes, another time. <laughs> and just walks yeah. off. You'd be like, you bastard. That's, but not, if they that's went, not taking a rain check though. That's like, uh, that's just turning you down. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure rain check in that context is used to turn people down. It just sounds nicer. It's yeah, let's take a rain not, check. Just yeah. Call, call me on you. Yeah, but if someone, said, if someone says, if I said to you, do you want to come out for dinner on Saturday? And you mm-hmm. went, oh, I can't, I'm at the game. Mm-hmm. Let's do a rain check. Let's do Sunday or Monday or whenever. Then that's yeah. different. If I said to you, do you want to come for dinner on Saturday? And you went, no, thanks. <laughs> and I'd be like, fuck you then. That's <laughs> I don't like dinner and I don't know what Saturday is. Sorry. <laughs> Just turn away. Yeah. Yeah. With you. <laughs> I think I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> But that's, that's what it comes down to. And yeah. it's if people have got yeah. plans, they do a rain check and they do it another day. But then, again, the rain check thing comes, like he was saying, if you buy something and something happens, when it rains, you get... Yeah. It makes sense, well, especially, yeah. you know, maybe it doesn't piss it down constantly where people came up with that phrase. So for mm. us, it's like, it's raining, just grab your coat. Mm. Is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, well, you'd fucking know if, you, if, if it was because it was raining over eight. <laughs> nothing would ever get done. I know, yeah. You'd be on day two or day three. It'd be yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. forever. See you in a couple of weeks when it stops mm. raining. Yeah, in the summer on July 19th, <laughs> between yeah. three and eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's right, Hush Puppy, and to me, and admittedly to millions of Americans, Hush Puppy was and is a brand of shoe. So it's very important for British people living in America, like me, to know the difference between the shoe brand and something else that Americans call a Hush Puppy before I put my foot in it, literally in the case of the shoe. Because in the US, and once again, particularly in the southern US, a Hush Puppy is, once again, another type of fried dough. Specifically, it's a ball about the size of a clementine of deep fried corn cornmeal batter. And it sounds disgusting, but it's not. And if there was nobody around to keep an eye on me, I could happily eat 50 of them a day, but I'd no longer be alive. Put it this way, from experience, they do taste better than the shoe. And how do I know that? Because I was 11 years old once. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below some other things that the other country doesn't have a word for. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost and I like that. Yeah, good then. Yeah, pretty accurate as well. Interesting. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff they have there, which uh, we don't have a word for over here. I'm surprised we don't have one for rain check, really, going back to that one. Because it's something that would travel over here, you know, where you can't make something. We've got, we've got, we've yeah. got certain words that we do, or being Brit- being typically British over here. If you say to me, do you fancy going for dinner? The answers are, I'll let you know. That means no. Let me, let me, <laughs> yeah, these are all, these are all words that mean no. Yeah. I'll let you know. I'll call you later on in the week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, what would be the other ones? Let me see if I can juggle a couple of things yeah. around. I might have something on. Let me check my diary. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a few things that we say that are like a basically along you know, those lines. Yeah. 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 I suppose so. I think yeah. I've got something on Saturday. I'll have to get back to you. Yeah. And then you don't. Mm. Mm. I get so, my people to call your people. Yeah. Want something <laughs> that's, like again, people. again, it's not a rain check. It's kind of like a, a turn fobbing, down, fobbing you off. off. Yeah. 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 I've heard rain check used over here. But I think it's an Americanism that's come over Correct. because of TV. Yeah, I think it's a very Amer- Americanism, isn't it? I've yeah. never heard anyone use I've that. I've heard a couple of people say oh, yeah. I have. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's a case of if, if you've got something on, they'll say, let's take a rain check and do it another time. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I've th- used that phrase loads. Yeah. But as an English person, you go, all right, just say no. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Just proper lean into it. <laughs> yeah. It's a good channel. I do like this. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really good. Excellent. Hope you guys like it too. Don't forget like and subscribe on the channel here please do us a favor get us past that 200,000 we'll catch you guys on the next one cheers guys cheers.